So, welcome everyone. This is the lesson one of the machine learning or AI club uh, that we do here in the computer science club. I'm very excited to have all of you here. And today we'll be talking about just the basic of what machine learning is, how what what machine learning is with respect to AI. We'll be talking about uh, applications of machine learning, all those things. So, let's get started. What is what is machine learning? What is artificial intelligence? Um, well, first we have to understand that these two things are very different. Uh, and that's something I didn't know until a couple months ago uh, because I thought the, the question was so obvious. I mean, machine learning, AI, it, it's kind of the same thing, isn't it? No, it's not. AI is trying to replicate humans while machine learning is learning uh, a, a task and getting better at, at a certain task as if you're a machine. And I'm gonna give you a couple more examples later so that this, is, this idea becomes more concrete because it's pretty important. So, again. Uh, what is it? So it's when computers learn from data. So when you're talking about machine learning, you're talking about computers that have been given a lot of data and they've been trained on this data to predict new data out of it. So for example, if you have a couple hundred thousand data points on when people usually watch the football game or whatever, you can start to predict how many people are gonna watch the next, the next game even though you don't really have that information yet, just from past data. And obviously the more data the better, uh, so the way it does that is by finding patterns in data and making predictions. So who uses machine learning? I'm just going to leave that slide up on the screen. I don't know about that last one. Uh, <laughs> but there you go. So you have all these big companies that, that use uh, machine learning in different aspects of their, of their work, right? I mean, Google, uh, it seems kind of obvious, but is it really? Do you guys know where uh, machine learning is used in Google? Anyone? Photos. Sure. And what aspects of photos? Like you can search like through photos for like an object. I'm sure. Okay, sure. That's one example. Anyone else? Okay, they're searching algorithm. Sure. Yes. Advertisements. Advertisements. Absolutely. So you see that Google uses their machine learning like absolutely everywhere. Uh, actually, Google is one of the biggest uh, companies that uses machine learning, uh, along with Amazon and. Uh, IBM and a bunch of others. So Amazon, again, also search recommendations. Uh, YouTube is video recommendations. Apple, Siri, right? Siri uh, uses machine learning. Facebook for post recommendations. All these social networks and stuff, uh, except for that last one, I don't know why I put that here. Um, but all these like recommend you posts based on uh, based on what you like already, right? So again, you have you have a collection of things that you know that user likes what's one prediction we can make on the post that they would like, right? When you go to their uh, Discover page or whatever. It is on Instagram, I don't even use that anymore, but there you go, that's, that's one example. Microsoft uses machine learning a lot, uh, and you'd be surprised to know that it's actually for good things. Uh, coming from Microsoft, that's a bit, it's a bit weird, but <laughs> I'm always here, I'm just kidding, but. Uh, Microsoft uses machine learning uh, for different projects that they do. Uh, for example, when I went up to uh, Washington to see people talk about just that. They had all these projects that deal with uh, drones and detecting, uh, across farmlands, detecting certain anomalies in, in the grass or in the soil based on purely imagery. And that's just trained artificial intelligence or machine learning uh, to detect those things. Right, tender matches, recommendation, all that stuff. That's pretty self-explanatory. Um, so that's who uses machine learning, and that's only the, the top of the iceberg. There's, there's many, many more companies that use it. So it's obviously it's obvious that there's a need for it. So again, why does it matter? It's the next big thing. We see it everywhere. All these big companies are using it. Uh, and if you can think of a human task, machine learning could probably do it. So now we're going to talk about a specific uh, field of machine learning called neural networks and why they're so cool. And neural networks are cool because uh, based on the technology and data that we have today, they're just so good at making predictions. So if you've never seen a neural network before, that's fine, don't run away. But essentially, this structure here, have you ever seen a structure that looks something like this before? No? Well basically, uh, all it is, is it's just a whole bunch of layers with certain nodes in it, so those are those nodes, right? And um, weights in between. And all of this, all of this is, is you have an input layer where your data comes in, difficult mathematics is applied here, it's this is like the black magic box, and then you get an output out of it, right? So what it is, is it's a universal function approximator. You plug in some data, and obviously, I mean, if your network is trained, 
uh, you get some data out of it, and that data is useful to you. And the reason I say it's a universal function approximator is because it can approximate pretty much any task. Like if you give it the task of giving you close predictions, if you give it the task of, again, seeing anomalies in the soil, all of these use neural networks and different types of neural networks for those aspects. And you see that those problems are pretty different, right? They're, they don't have much to do in common. But neural networks are so good at this that we could just use them for pretty much everything we, we need in machine learning. So again, they outperform every other machine learning model. So this is a map of uh, machine learning. Thank you, scikit-learn. And you can see, this is, I don't want to overwhelm you with this too much, so you don't have to, you have to, basically what I want you to take out of this is, there's a whole bunch of, of different paths that you can take in machine learning that will tell you what you have to do for your, for, for what you want to achieve. So say you want to make an algorithm to predict songs, right? Or like, for example, if you want to predict a, a genre, if you have, a website that listens to a song and predicts what genre it is, like hip-hop or, you know, electro or whatever, uh, you're going to have to have fast data for that, and then you can go down that tree depending on how much data you already have, like if you have more than 500,000 samples, you go down a certain path and so on. It's pretty useful uh, to have this on hand to know what kind of, of task you, you'll be doing. Uh, so again, some quick uh, machine learning ideas just to prove that it's pretty versatile. Uh, music genre classifier, traffic light optimizer. A tumor detector from X-ray images and power consumption optimizer. Actually, that last one, uh, Apple does that. You'll see that in their newest chips and their newest phones, they have a special chip in there. They call it the Bionic chip, and it uses machine learning to optimize your battery usage. So usually, uh, on previous iPhones, you'd have your battery would drain much much quicker, uh, or that, that's what they claim now that they increase their battery life purely through software. And the way they do that is using machine learning. So you're the machine learning in your phone will predict what kind of apps you'll be using, so it will op optimize the battery for that. And again, all these other ideas that you see up here, uh, those are just some quick ideas that you can think of, uh, and then that can be automated to machine learning. Even though, even though if you were not to use machine learning, these tasks would be pretty hard, right? If I were to make a tumor detector without, without machine learning, without AI, how do you do that? Because every case is different. But the cool thing about machine learning is you don't have to worry about edge cases. You can just give it a whole bunch of data, plug and chug, train it a bit, and then you get an output. So types of machine learning algorithms. This is by far the heaviest slide in my presentation. Uh, but essentially, you have these three types of machine learning algorithms in, in the real world. You have supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement. And you can fit pretty much any idea that you can think of in one of those three. So supervised uses inputs and la labels, which you can think of as X and Y uh, data points, to figure out a problem. So again, that same idea of, say you want the, the music classifier again, but you want to make sure, you want to detect if it's hip hop or not. So it's going to take a new song, it's going to see, hmm, based on previous songs that I've listened to, is this, does this qualify or not? It's a yes or no, right? It's, it's, pretty, it's, it's pretty simple, you, it's either yes or no. Um, so from that, that's classification, right? Regression is not yes or no, it has more depth to it. it you want to find, uh, there, there's more to it than just, than just two values, right? You see on the right where it says regression here. So that's just a whole bunch of data points. You plot the line of best fit, and given a new value, would you be able to find the new associated uh, Y value? This is the AI plug, if you are interested in the AI plug. The AI plug. Um, Sorry about that. Anyway, um, so that's that's what regression is, right? It's about uh, finding and predicting a continuous quantity. Unsupervised is when we don't tell the model the answers, right? So supervised, remember, we, we told it uh, to, to train it. We, we say, no, you're wrong. This is actually what it is. Ah, okay, I'll update myself and then give you new values. Unsupervised, we don't give the model the answers. It has to find it in, in the data. It has to find patterns, right? And reinforcement, Maximize, maximizes a certain uh, type of reward. So I'll get into reinforcement in just a bit. Let me elaborate a little bit on supervised learning and what I mean and how that connects to a neural network at all. So let's go back to the idea of this neural network, okay, which takes some data. Uh, so again, takes some data through through here and outputs data through here, right? So the first time you run a neural network, the first time you run uh, your simulation is going to have terrible results. 
And the reason it has terrible results is because you haven't trained it, right? There's, there's uh, three steps to machine learning. You have to build your model, you have to train it, and you have to test it. The training phase is very important because you uh, plug the data in, goes through the network, like goes through all these calculations, and gives you an output value. If you know the answer already to that output, it's, um, it's supervised learning, right? So supervised learning, you already know the answers, that's how you train it, so that you can say, okay, find the answer to this data point. Okay, I think it's this. No, you're wrong, it's not that, it's this instead. So now you have what the network thought it was versus what it actually is, the answer, okay? And you can find the difference between those two points and the network will say, okay, so based on the difference between those two values, the one that calculated and the one that actually is the answer, I can update myself to fit better for future data points, right? And that's what all of these nodes are for. Um, mathematically, what goes on in here uh, this is a visual representation of something that's uh, a little bit more abstract, but essentially all of these uh, dots are called nodes and uh, actual mathematical values between 0 and 1 go through them, right? And they go through each of those weights, which is a multiplication number, so it, it's going to multiply those values by a certain number, like say 1.25, and it's going to go through here, through each of those nodes, and onto the next layer, and then onto the output layer. Right? And once you've gone through this entire model, you're going to end up with some number. And that number can be interpreted as something else. For your answer, for example. And at first, your answer is very abstract and very bad, but you can train the model uh, using, using that idea of comparing the real answer versus what the network got. And we'll talk about that later. That's called backpropagation. So, so far, all right? I know I'm throwing a lot of information at you guys. That's the point. Uh, but that's essentially... On, on a larger scale, that's how these companies achieve those video recommendations, those post recommendations, that's how they do that. Right? And that's for uh, supervised learning. Uh, supervi unsupervised learning is a bit different. Again, we don't have the answer. So the data you have, that's all you got. You've got to figure out patterns in that data. Like for example, you see these three uh, clusters over here. Uh, the network has learned that um, this was one cluster, this is another cluster, and this is another cluster. Uh, these weren't actually colored before, and you can use another technique in machine learning called k-means clustering uh, to find those things. You don't have to know that, I'm just saying that. Um, but it's going to be able to detect what each cluster is, and so when you give it a new data point, it's going to know automatically, and you don't have to say, no, that's wrong, it's actually this. It's going to know. That's how that works. Reinforcement is the one that's most abstract, and I want to give you an example so you understand it better. But essentially all it is, is if you say, think you want to make um, an AI, or, yeah, actually an AI. You want to make an AI that learns to play a certain video game, like Super Mario. Well, Super Mario is pretty complex to play, right? You're not going to play it 100,000 times and give it to the model and say, okay, copy me, uh, because that's just not viable. But what you can do is you can say, okay, you see that score that goes up as you go through the level? Try and optimize that. And that's what reinforcement does, right? It maximizes a certain reward, and your reward might depend on what you're doing. If you're playing a video game, that might be your score. As you're going up and Mario punches the blocks, it gets, it gets points. Uh, that might be what you want to increase, right? And this is the, more, the one that's more abstract. We'll talk about it um, later. Uh, we don't, we're not going to talk about it today because it's, it's going to be too much. This is just an introduction, right? So if you understand these three concepts, that's the basis of machine learning. That, those are the three pillars that you want to be looking at, okay? So supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement. So far so good? Can I, can I ask a question? Absolutely. Yes. So let me just give you two examples sure. of how machine learning is used, and can you, can you tell me what kind of machine learning you think it's, is being used with that example? I'll try my best, go for it. Okay, so take the example of, I am not a robot, like one of those CAPTCHA, of things online. Yes. Which one of these three do you feel, um, you know, a company might use um, for those CAPTCHA? Uh, well, let me understand what you're asking. Are you trying to make an AI that breaks the I am not a robot part, or are you trying no. to make? I'm trying to use machine learning so that the you know companies can better use that that actual CAPTCHA. Uh, okay. So. What I'm getting from this is that 
they want to en enhance their, their privacy by by using that and where to use it? Is that what you're? Is that or what, you're or what to? which one of these three is is being used in that example? Well, uh, I'm not. You know, a say, say you're trying to register for some site, and the company wants to be absolutely sure you're not uh, a robot that's just trying to make bogus uh, accounts or bogus aliases. Which one of these three would you feel uh, machine learning learning might be appropriate for that? Okay. Uh, well, if you wanted to make a very simple version of that, I would say you could actually uh, get away with just using supervised classification. Okay. Uh, because the way you would do that is you would gather a whole bunch of data based on your user. And the way that, that relates to how I am not a robot actually works, right? So the way it works is when you click that box, uh, a whole bunch of information is sent through that box, like the way you move your cursor to it, actually. Right. So that a robot would actually just teleport the cursor right to it. Right. A human wouldn't do that. A human would move it somewhat randomly, so you know it's somewhat human. You could also be, you could also base it off their key presses and like the, the, the spaces between their key presses. That's how they do it. Uh, so you could have all this data, and you have it for a whole bunch of people, like a hundred thousand people. But you could also generate that data, right? You could use computers to generate that data and data that looks somewhat fake. And once you have those two. Well, you can train a model and say, okay, I have the data from this user. Is this user real? Yes or no? Classification, right? If it's yes, well, we know it's yes because we either got that data from a real user or we generated, we generated it, right? So yes or no. You would know that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, the second example. Sure. Um, right now, uh, electrophysiologists, they basically isolate a certain part of the pulmonary vein they zap that part, and then all of a sudden, supposedly, your atrial fibrillation, your irregular heartbeat, could potentially go away. So say that the machine learns, um, gets information from 22,000 surgeries that are performed. Okay. Um, because after all, the, the pulmonary veins, there's a, only a finite amount of them, right? Uh, in in your in your um, in your heart, and um, the actual procedure, there's really um, even though it's it's for every person it's different, but more or less the the actual way you go about um, trying to cure their AFib is kind of similar. So okay. which which one of those three types of machine learning? do you feel uh, would be appropriate for a surgeon that's trying to perform that procedure? So what I would say is you're optimizing for a certain task, right? You want to get yeah. better at a certain task. Exactly. Example of the video game, remember? Right. Reinforcement learning. Okay, yes. thank you. Uh, my HDMI cable kind of, I'm not sure why my screen went black like that. I'm just gonna reconnect that real quick. I'm not quite done yet. I promise we'll be done in a couple minutes. Um, Seems to be working on this screen. So that's good. Um, all right, so that's what we were just on. Are we clear on this? Does this make sense? And we can actually go back to the examples I gave you. I mean, the the quick uh, machine learning ideas, and just just from these, you can kind of find what category they're in, uh, just based on this. So next up, again, real quick, what about neural networks? That's just what we talked about, right? How does any of this relate to what I just showed you? How does how do neural networks fit into this? Well, again, it's the same thing, right? You're, you're always gonna be taking in data and you're always gonna be outputting data, right? And it's, the, it's, what you, it's what that data is and what you want out of it that classifies whether you're in reinforcement, supervised, or unsupervised, right? So same, same idea applies. You just plug in a lot of data, get it out, and do you have a difference between um, your, an answer? Do you even have an, an answer? If so, then it's supervised. If not, it's unsupervised. Well, the neural network is, is very versatile for, for those things. So, uh, go. okay, I'm gonna leave you with this. Uh, this is a map of machine learning, and if you're, starting into, if you're starting in machine learning and you're interested in the field and you're interested in automating all these problems that seem uh, at first really complicated, but all it is is just a bunch of data, this is what you want to look at. So 30, 35% of machine learning is linear algebra. 25% is probability theory and statistics, 15% is calculus, another 15% would be algorithms, and 10% would be data preprocessing. So 
Well, linear algebra is something you learn in college. You don't have to learn it at a college level to understand it. It's just the idea of matrices. You've done matrices before. If you haven't, it's pretty easy. Um, like the idea of multiplying matrices together, um, that's how neural networks work. Uh, probability theory and statistics, you have all these numbers that you want to get an average for. You have, you're, you're manipulating data. That's where the statistics part comes in. The idea of calculus. The idea of, of calculus is very strong when you want to train the model because you'll be plotting the, the, the model's um, success rate as some sort of function and you want to uh, go down to the lowest point of that function so that you can find the lo what's called a, a local minimum which would represent the model's best possible performance for that task. And to do that, you, to go down the function to its lowest point, you can use calculus for that. Uh, the data pre-processing is the most annoying part, is the, one that, is the part that everyone hates, but it's uh, preparing your data. It's very important if you're working machine learning that you have good data. For example, if your data isn't prepared for your model, uh, if, you're, if you have like a whole bunch of data points which aren't labeled or you don't have the answers to them, it's gonna be kind of hard to train your model on that. Luckily, there's good sources online that can get you started, like the MNIST data set, which is uh, where I started training my models. It's essentially a whole data set of uh, written numbers in 27 by 27 grids with their associated numbers. So if you, you have a written number five, and then the actual value five next to it, so you can train your model and tell it, no, that's a five, and you know it's a five because they give you the value, the X and the Y, and then you can test that model on a whole series of different points it hasn't seen before. But that's the map of machine learning. This is all you need to know for machine learning. And even though it looks daunting, it doesn't take that much to go out of your way, maybe an hour a day or so, and learn a whole bunch of things from a certain field and get a head start on machine learning. Uh, but that's, that's the idea of what machine learning is. And um, we looked at the machine learning pipeline. It's, it's a very big field. Obviously, it's growing very fast. So if you want to be in on it, you got to get in early. So. There you go. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Excellent. Guys, any questions? Any comments? Okay, very good, Gaten. Awesome.